Alright everybody, this is Mars Man here, and welcome to part 3 of my second world tour and showcase. Coming up in this part, we're going to be uh, showing you the pig and cow blender, which is basically a breeding and auto cooking uh, type of contraption, just a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to take you for a quick view of the horse stables, our revolving lighthouse, and something new that uh, was just added, uh, the uh, villager breeding cells and villager trading hall that uh, Daedalus is currently uh, working on in his Let's Play series. We've gone ahead and jumped ahead and uh, built one of those. And last but not least, uh, just a quick tour of uh, what I plan to do for my house. This is definitely a work in progress, but uh, we'll give you a quick tour of what we've got done so far. So uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get straight at it. Uh, on to the Pig and Cow Blender. All right, let's go ahead and we'll head outside and we'll go see our pig and cow blender. We've got that over here on the other side of the courtyard. We had a little fenced-in area for the animals. Uh, a few pigs and cows and so forth. Hi, guys. Go ahead and and here we are with our little pig and cow area and over here is the blender go ahead and jump inside okay so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, quickly turn a little bit of that sound down because there's mine cats that are going around down inside and they're just noisy so we'll go ahead and do that all right we'll be back to the game okay so here we are We've got basically two holding areas. Yeah, we have uh, uh, pigs over here, and we have cows over here. And I'm going to go ahead and go back into normal mode here. Uh, and you'll see why in just a second. Um, we've got a couple of chests here with the, with the right things in there. I've got them all broken out into uh, the proper size stacks. Um, six wheat one for each cow, and we have six carrots, and uh, a carrot for each pig. Uh, now before we go ahead and get started, let's go downstairs, and uh, this is the hilarious part. It's like, what in the world is this crazy contraption? Well, basically, this is the blender. Okay, so I'll try to give you an, an explanation of how this works. Uh, basically, we got cows up here, and they're being held in this little uh, pan in there with water. And the water basically pushes things down uh, toward this chamber here, where there's one water source in the corner that kind of pushes to this edge right over here. Now, cow, baby cows are one block high, so uh, the glass is cut off right there along that line, and these signs prevent the water from coming out. The cows can't, uh, being two blocks high, can't fit in there, but the baby cows will come down and into this lower chamber. Now, we have something similar over here for pigs, but uh, baby pigs are half a block high, so instead of a sign, we've got a half slab sitting here. And again, uh, the pigs are, are a block high. They can't come down through because of that, but the baby pigs will be a half a block tall, and they'll slip down into this chamber. And again, it's the same type of deal. There's a single uh, water source on that far corner that pushes them toward this edge. Now, what we have going on here in the center is we have six mine cats running around. They're all kind of glitching together. And we have a hopper mine cat as well. And the hopper mine cat will pick up any of the drops, uh, the, uh, the pork chops and the leather and the steaks. When they die, um, what will happen is as the, uh, the baby animals are pushed into this corner, as the mine cat passes by, they'll go through the glass and actually enter the mine cat. Same with the, uh, the cows on the other side. They will, uh, the baby cows will be picked up on that corner. And these guys will go round and round and round, getting incredibly dizzy. And uh, because they're uh, baby uh, animals, they can fit under those lava blocks in the mine cart and not be touched. So uh, they will sit there and go round and round and round until they grow up. Once they grow up, however, their heads will touch the lava block. It sets them on fire, cooks the meat, the meat drops on the track, and then as the hopper mine cat uh, passes over, it'll pick them up, and then there's a hopper 
right there uh, underneath that track that will feed this chest. And as you can see, well, we've got a couple of raw ones there. We'll have to take, well, we'll have to worry about that. I'll explain why in a little bit. Um, uh, they will basically get dropped into this chest, and uh, there we go. So let's go ahead and we'll get the breeding started. We'll go upstairs and we'll get things going, and we'll get to see these guys go round and round and round. So uh, let's go ahead and start with the, the, uh, uh, the pigs. And I've got this little glass block here to keep myself from falling in, because you don't want to fall into that pit. There's no way out without having to put a block there, and it's just kind of a big pain. So uh, we will go ahead and uh, get these guys bred up. Now, the reason I came out of uh, creative mode is I want to be able to see when I've got all the pigs bred. So uh, if I was in creative mode every time that I f uh, fed a pig a carrot, it wouldn't deplete out of the inventory here. So now that I'm back in normal mode, as I cl right click on here, as you can see, the carrots are going down. And when my hand is empty, I have all six pigs uh, uh, with, a, with a carrot. So they're all uh, happy and frisky and uh, over there making baby pigs. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with the cows. I right click. Da, da, okay, there's all the cows. They're all frisky and happy. And now we go downstairs and Lo and behold, we have baby pigs in the minecart. Okay, we'll go over here in the corner. We can suck up the XP through the glass. Uh, do the same thing over here. There we go. Picked up all that. Uh, once in a while, yeah, we got <coughs> some reason. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the, the minecarts are glitched together or what, but we've got one cow, baby cow, still stuck in the lower chamber there that uh, didn't get into a minecart. Ideally, uh, with six cows, you end up with uh, three baby cows and three baby pigs, six minecarts. They all should be in the minecart, but for some reason, we've got one that isn't. But that's okay. Uh, but there they go. They're going round and round and round, as you can see. They're not touching that lava at all. Uh, after about uh, five or ten minutes, I can go up and uh, breed them some more, and we can fill this uh, lower chamber uh, with... Uh, more baby pigs and this one with more baby cows and they'll just sit there and wait until there's a minecart that's empty that will pick them up again. I don't know if, if, uh, if we're just glitched or why that last cow didn't uh, get picked up by a minecart. But again, no matter. Uh, we'll go ahead. Let's see. It's uh, uh, right. It takes about 20 minutes for them to grow up. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and uh, I'll come back when uh, they're just about ready to, uh, to grow up and we'll see them go ahead and hit that lava block. So we'll see you in just a few minutes. Okay, and we're back. Uh, the guys have been riding around here in circles. I'm sure they're sufficiently dizzy and cross-eyed. I know I am from watching them. Uh, as you can see, we went ahead and uh, went upstairs and we bred a few more pigs. We got, a th we got three babies sitting in the wings over here. Um, same way with the uh, cows on this side, of course we have four because one didn't make it in there, but uh, these guys are reaching the end of this amusement park ride pretty soon and they're going to start uh, meeting their untimely end when they grow up and hit that lava blade. Uh, just while we're waiting here, I just thought I'd uh, point out that the uh, redstone blocks provide the power for the powered rails. Uh, one here as they go around and of course one over here as well. Uh, this little spot right here is where we can put uh, additional minecarts in if we ever have a problem with the system. Uh, we just drop them in there and uh, being powered they just go through the block and uh, go into the system that way. So that's how you enter minecarts into the system. So um, it's not going to be too much longer. These guys are going to grow up. They're going to start hitting those uh, lava blocks uh, on either side and uh, cooking themselves to death and dropping the meat on the tracks and the hopper my cat will just pick it up and go over this hopper and drop it into the chest so that should be happening any moment and of course as soon as empty mine carts are available uh, these guys waiting in the wings will uh, will be picked up and they will start their little jury ride for the next 20 minutes now that uh, that one cow that was over here on the side that didn't get picked up he'll actually grow up to be full size and there's enough room for him to do that and that's not a problem he'll uh, get picked up by an empty mine cart as well but of course being an adult he'll immediately hit that lava blade and uh, get cooked and that'll be the end of him, and we'll have uh, steak and leather from his demise as well. So, 
Uh, we're just waiting now for these guys to uh, to start growing up. Should happen almost any moment now. Uh, I would say within the next minute or two, and uh, we will start having our cooked pork chops, our steak, and our leather drops uh, uh, going on the track. And uh, so the, the next round, we'll get picked up by the mine cats, and the whole process will start over again. Um, I guess uh, Doc, uh, you know, had tried uh, doing this. You, you could put more than uh, six in each pen. Uh, I didn't want to push uh, push the limits of the system too far, so six seemed to be good. Uh, you know, when you had six on the side uh, and six minecarts, that's enough congestion for the server because uh, these things do all kind of glitch together, and sometimes you get uh, strange issues like that one cow that didn't get. Uh, one baby cow didn't get picked up by the mine card, so I didn't want to push it, and uh, this is sufficient for my needs. It works uh, extremely well, uh, considering uh, the, the design and uh, all those guys, uh, all those entities all smashed together in the middle, so uh, we're just waiting now, as I said, for them to grow up, which again should happen almost any time. Um, uh, come on, guys, grow up been on this thrill ride long enough. Yeah, not quite yet, I guess. Um, underneath here, uh, I did the same type of system as I did with the auto cooker. Uh, that's what this switch is for. Basically, there is a hopper underneath the chest, and while the, uh, the switch is up, that uh, torch is powered, and that inhibits that uh, hopper from uh, sucking everything up. So we can basically just leave the items in the chest, uh, as they are now, so that I can uh, pick them up for some quick food. And when I uh, want to go ahead and send all this stuff back to the base, uh, it goes down through. And we have a minecart delivery system that hooks into the food side of our item sorter. And uh, we'll show you that after these guys uh, go ahead and get cooked up. We'll go ahead and drain that chest and we'll wash the uh, mine cats. Put some glass in here so we can see it from the top. Oh, there they go. Here. They've grown up. They're hitting that lava block. They're on fire. Squeals. Yep. Die, die, die. There they all go. They're all getting picked up, hitting the lava blade, and croaking to their death dropping the meat, and as you can see, whoop, a little bit of lag spike there. As you can see, the babies have been picked up. Oh, we got one big cow in there. That's okay. The next time that goes around, wow, we're getting some lag here. There we go. Hopefully that's settled out a little bit, but yeah, we got some lag happening. But anyway, uh, yep, that one big cow, uh, he grew up, he didn't hit, hit an empty mine cat, but he will the next time around and he'll be instantly cooked. But uh, as you can see, that's how it basically works. Uh, they hit that lava blade, caught on fire, they dropped the stuff on the tracks, and now in the chest, there we go, we've got some, uh, some additional meat there. Uh, as I said, the reason we're not worried about these uh, raw pork, pork chops and raw beef is they're going to go into the... Uh, the uh, food item sorter, and of course we've got the auto cooking furnace there for raw meat, so that's not a problem, that'll get taken care of at the base. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll flip the switch here and we'll watch the minecart do its thing. Okay, there we go. And there goes the minecart, it's going down, and all these items are draining out of the chest. Okay, you can see them going now. And when the last item comes out of the uh, out of the hopper at the bottom, that minecart will go on its way, and it will head on over to the base uh, and drop into the hopper at the other end of this track. And uh, we'll go ahead, and uh, when that happens, we'll we've got a portal that goes over to that room. So as it gets close to happening, okay, let's get downstairs so that we can watch the minecart leave. All right. <coughs> yep, there it goes, and it's on its way. So. Let's go ahead and we'll jump through our portal system. And that takes us over to the other end. Whoops, <laughs> I backed into it. Okay, let's get back in there again. All right, there we go. And get out here and get out of the way so I don't back into the, uh, to the portal again. And we'll wait for that minecart to arrive and that comes over to this hopper. Here it is. Okay, and it stops and starts unloading all the stuff out of the chest. It's just the same way that the uh, 
the mining minecart system works. This one is just a single chest because I didn't. Uh, I knew there wouldn't be an awful lot at any one time, so I didn't really need the uh, the double minecart system like I would have had, uh, like I do have down in the uh, the mine shaft. Uh, so uh, with a limited amount of items that get produced, one single track is enough. And as soon as this completely empties and drains out, that uh, comparator will turn back on <coughs> this powered rail and it will send it back and there it goes and it will go ahead and park itself. Uh, where we are, by the way, is uh, just outside our auto cooker here. And uh, there it is. It's fired up. Those are those uh, uh, raw steaks and raw pork chops that were in that mix. So they're getting cooked up as it is now. And we'll go ahead and uh, close the door to this maintenance area. And we'll go back over to the blender. And as we can see, the minecart has uh, is parked itself, uh, ready for the next load. Uh, whenever it comes out, we'll go back over here and we will flip the switch back up so that the items stay in the chest. And, uh, whoop, yeah, we got a glitch. Uh, sometimes that happens as you glitch back and forth. Uh, sometimes these things uh, get stuck. Uh, it is a pain to fix this if it gets broken. I have, uh, I've had it uh, break a couple of times and uh, it's very annoying to get to get fixed. It's not the most reliable design, but it, it sure is fun to watch. It, uh, the first time I saw it, I was just amused. So I'm not sure why they sometimes glitch out of that cart, um, but uh, we'll go ahead and fix that up later on. Not really too worried about it. So that is the uh, the pig and cow blender for what it's worth. Like I said, it's it's more for or for amusement's sake than. Uh, the practicality, because like I said, it is kind of glitchy sometimes, and uh, I've uh, I've had this whole system break uh, during updates uh, when I first moved over to the to the bucket server. It broke it entirely, and uh, it would not work at all. And I spent quite a while trying to make it work. And yeah, for some reason, the the, the baby animals would just uh, when they grew up, they didn't hit the lava blade. Um, then I got it working for just the cow side, and the pigs wouldn't hit the lava blade. And then some for some reason it miraculously straightened itself out and started working again. Not sure why, but uh, anyway, as I said, it's uh, this whole system is just more for my amusement than it is for, for real pl practicality, but that's the Pig and Cow Blender. Hope you enjoyed that, and uh, we'll go ahead and we'll continue the world tour here now. Uh, we're over in the general area, so... Uh, uh, without pausing, let's go ahead and I will show you the stables. That is a new addition uh, that I had put in that uh, wouldn't have been in there had I done part two of the world tour right off because uh, the 1.6 update came out. And of course, well, we got 1.6, we've got to have horses, so we went ahead and uh, made a stables. And those are over here. Of course, it has to be raining and it's at night, of course, but hopefully that will clear up soon. If not, we will try to, to force the weather off. But here is our stable area. And, uh, oh, I hear an Enderman po popping around someplace. But, uh, go ahead and, uh, give you the quick tour here. There's not much really to see, basically. Uh, we just wanted to make a, uh, a quick stable area to park the horses. We got some hay bales here. And, uh, yes, I was lucky enough to be able to get a donkey. Um, uh, in all actuality, I did have to cheat to get uh, my first set of horses. Uh, I had, uh, as I said, when we initially came over to this world, I uh, had the Dynamap uh, up and uh, went into uh, creative mode and flew around the map a lot to uh, fill out that Dynamap because I wanted uh, our players here to be able to have a, a chance to kind of look over the terrain and really pick out their ideal spot for their house. So I wanted to make sure that plenty of the map was revealed and uh, went and flew around a pretty good area. As a matter of fact, I, I pretty much went to the edge of the ocean on this continent uh, most of the way around. Uh, toward the southern end of this uh, uh, map, it, uh, it goes on you know, in land form for quite a ways and I didn't want to go any further than I did. I went quite a ways trying to find the edge, but the whole western, northern, and eastern side of this map, uh, I went all the way to the, uh, to the ocean. And unfortunately, uh, uh, when 1.6 came out, any pre-existing discovered chunks uh, would not spawn horses. 
I, uh, I, I guess it can, but it's extremely rare. And I spent uh, a couple of days running around for all to all the plain biomes, trying to find a horse so I didn't have to to cheat and spawn one. But I looked and looked and looked, and I just couldn't find a horse anywhere. And I would have had to go so darn far to find a a, uh, a section of the map that hadn't uh, hadn't been rendered yet. And it's like, oh, that would just take me days to get a horse back. So. I resolved to cheat. Unfortunately, I went into creative mode and I spawned. I said I'm going to I'm going to spawn just 3. And uh, luckily the first two were horses and the third one turned out to be this donkey. So it's like perfect. That's all I need. And I went ahead and uh, bred some of the the uh, horses together and of course I was able to uh, uh breed a horse and the donkey together and got a mule and then uh, of course these guys are outfitted with chess and uh what are you doing without your lead there, buddy? Hmm. As a matter of fact, you don't have the lead. That's one thing I've noticed with the 1.6. Sometimes the leads break, and there's no rhyme to reason uh, why they just disappear. I had parked a horse outside of my base at that fence post, and one day I logged in, and it was just gone. And so I got another one, and I had left it there, and it disappeared as well. So... Let me go ahead and get a lead out of here. Uh, right there we go. And we'll get a lead on these guys. Make sure they don't go anywhere. I'm not sure why the leads disappear, but sometimes they do. So we'll go ahead and tie that one up there. And this guy here. Here we go, fella. All right, we'll get you tied up there. Okay, we got any other horses that are missing leads? Okay, that one does, that one does. Uh, the mule does. Okay, good. This one. No, oh, this one here. Ah, uh, where in the world? Okay, well, we'll tie you up over there. I don't know why these leads disappear, but uh, sometimes they do. So, uh, just something to be aware of. Maybe it's just something to do with the bucket server. I don't know. But uh, I have noticed that occasionally leads disappear. I noticed in the 1.62 uh, update, I came in and every lead in the stable was on the ground. Uh, it had broken all of them. I don't know why. I, I know they changed the way that the leads are uh, displayed. If you were looking away from an animal, uh, you would not see the lead, and that's something they fixed in 1.62. I don't know if that's the reason why they all dropped off, but uh, I came out and all the leads were on the ground, and none of the horses were tied up. Uh, so. But it does seem to be that uh, occasionally these leads disappear, even under 162. So, uh, so be it. That's the way that is. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show you, and of course that's not rendering correctly. That's crappy. Let's see if we can get up there and get that. Uh, I do have this uh, revolving lighthouse, and hopefully if I get close enough to the thing, the, the thing will render correctly. It looks like half of it is missing. That's uh, annoying. Come on. Render up correctly. Wow, I'm getting really close to that, and it's still not rendering correctly. Hmm. Wow. That's a real glitch. Holy cow. Is it not going to render? That's nuts. Okay, let's, uh, let's go into creative mode, and I'll get even closer. I guess I'll have to fly up and see if I can get that. There it goes. Wow, that was crazy. Yeah. Uh, I've noticed one sex has a real problem with uh, with rendering blocks. So here we have our revolving lighthouse. Uh, this is all made out of quartz. Uh, basically it works off a daylight sensor which we have here. And so as soon as it becomes nighttime we have uh, uh, this nice revolving light based on uh, redstone lamps. And I think it looks really cool. I was extremely pleased with how this uh, this came out, especially at a distance that uh, that quartz looks really really cool and uh, I really I'm very very proud of this lighthouse it came out extremely well again um, this is somebody else's design that I followed and I'll put a link in the net for that but uh, gives you a nice little overview of uh, of the base uh, there there's the uh, the tree farm uh, over there the tree eater and the lumber yard and of course there's the stable and our area with our pig and cow blender but uh, we'll go ahead and give you a, a quick tour of this. Uh, it's kind of uh, jammed tight in here, so there really isn't an awful lot to see. But we'll uh, we'll take you up inside anyway and just kind of 
give you a quick uh, overview of how this works. Um, basically, we've got uh, kind of a clock, uh, or a, uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of a clock, uh, that uh, gets fed in from that daylight sensor, and we've got, up here, we've got a bunch of repeaters that are going around. As you can see, that basically uh, controls uh, the speed of the revolving light. They're on uh, uh, three ticks. I could take them to four and slow that down, but uh, we'll go up here and see if we can get up in the middle. As I said, it's kind of tight up in here, but we've got a bunch of torches that are basically lighting up that are uh, uh, basically feeding blocks above here, and here is the actual light on the inside, as you can see, rotating around, and uh, works really, really neat. It, uh, I, I was pleased with, with how this came out. Basically, this uh, when the daylight sensor uh, senses nighttime, it's inverted, and it basically pushes this piston up, which uh, then will cause all of this to, to start running. And I hear a zombie beating on the door down here. So we'll go take care of him. Hello there. Oh, it's a kid zombie. Oh, I hate these guys. They're so quick and fast. They're really hard to kill. Uh, not a big fan of the uh, of the, the kid zombies. The zombies are bad enough. So, all right. But, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and jump down. It is nighttime here, and I don't want to be out uh, too far away. But... Uh, uh, we'll go ahead, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the portal. Well, no, we're going to pause right here, I guess, and uh, take a quick break. Hopefully the rain will stop, and uh, when it does, we'll come back and do a bonus feature that would not have been in Part 2 uh, had I uh, gone ahead and done this quickly. Uh, Daedalus was working on a villager uh, breeding uh, system and trading hall, and he's just been working on that on his last few videos. He just did a live stream where he uh, uh, completed the other side of the trading hall. And I've been following along. Matter of fact, I jumped ahead and I basically have a completed... Oh, hello there. Glad I'm in uh, creative mode or he'd have been shooting at me. Uh, <laughs> I went ahead and, uh, and completed that trading hall and we're going to be uh, showing you that next. So stand by. We'll be right back. All right. We're back. And go ahead now and take you down to the villager breeding cells. Again, this is uh, Daedalus's design. He's been working on this in his Let's Play series and his live streams. And I thought it was a really cool design, so we went ahead and, uh, and went to go make these. Now, now I have to mention that uh, I have the, uh, the Spax uh, texture pack, and recently he uh, updated that to a uh, resource pack and initially the uh, the sounds of the villages were kind of like <laughs> and apparently uh, he decided to uh, make some modifications and now the villages have this bizarre sound I'll, I'll turn it up a little bit for you whoops let's uh, back into the options we'll turn the sound up to me they sound exactly like Ewoks I swear he got this right straight out of the Star Wars movie because It's just crazy. These these guys sound like a bunch of Ewoks. <laughs> it's really kind of silly. As a matter of fact, it actually kind of drives me crazy. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll turn the sound down a little bit uh, back to where we had it. Because uh, listening to these guys chatter is just going to drive me insane. So, all right, there we go. We got the sound down to a manageable area. But here we are with the breeding cells. Uh, basically, I copied uh, Data's design exactly. Uh, made the large sink bowl on the bottom and uh, uh, borrowed some villages over from the uh, the iron golem farm on the other side and uh, brought them over and uh, got them into the cells, got them breeding. Uh, basically how this works is uh, we've got a water block. We'll get up here a little bit so you can see. Uh, there's a little one that's been spawned. Uh, we've got a, a uh, water block in each corner. Pushes them into the middle and uh, underneath, as you can see, we've got this little uh, star-shaped pattern. As uh, Data discovered, that if you uh, left it uh, uh, with water all the way around, uh, too many of them got out and uh, didn't leave enough for breeding. So this star pattern apparently works quite well, and the signs keep the water from going. So basically, when it gets so crowded, 
that uh, one of these guys gets pushed over to an edge uh, as uh, data dis discovered that the, these guys basically when they're in water just sit the uh, and uh, jump up and down like they're holding the space bar continuously so when one gets over to this edge they will uh, uh, come up through the water and they will basically uh, come out into this area and then they will flow over to the edge and drop down and uh, hit the uh, the bottom here with a big sink bowl and eventually get pushed into the uh, the shaft in the center and that's where they get brought down to the villager trading hall now up top of course uh, we've gone ahead and uh, glassed it all in, throwed some glowstone in. Uh, I know Data is going to finish off his uh, uh, when he gets uh, uh, to the showcase part of the build. When he gets it, makes it all look nice and pretty. But that's uh, that's what I decided to do, and I think it looks pretty cool. I agree with uh, with Data that uh, pyramid design works great. Here's our one villager up to the top with the doors that basically give uh, gives the incentive for all the uh, other villagers to breed and we've dropped him in a mine cart uh, as uh, one of uh, Data's fans suggested to keep him from opening the doors and escaping so he is contained up there he cannot leave and basically these guys uh, will just go ahead and breed and breed and breed and uh, never stop and provides us with a source of villagers for the villager trading hall which we're going to go downstairs and show next so Let's go ahead and uh, head down uh, underneath uh, to our villager trading hall. Uh, and again, I followed uh, Daedalus's design uh, almost to the letter. Uh, used the same uh, stone bricks that he did. I thought it was really cool. Uh, looked uh, came out really, really nice. Oh, by the way, uh, we went ahead and uh, checked back in on our uh, blender. And as you can see, everything is back to normal. Uh, apparently that was just a graphical anomaly uh, with those guys sitting out there. Uh, they got picked up and uh, there's the, uh, the cooked uh, steak and pork chops and leather. Everything worked out. Uh, the cats are still running, so uh, that straightened itself out. That means I don't have to go in and fix it. That's a good thing. We're happy about that. So. It does glitch occasionally. In this case, it, like I said, it managed to straighten itself out. So, fire out, and we will go ahead and go down now to our villager trading hall. And uh, this is really cool. I, I like Data's design in this. I thought it was extremely clever what he came up with. And so, here we are. Oh, must have an Enderman leaving a dirt block for us. Thank you so much there, Mr. Enderman. Let's uh, get the shovel out. There we go. Excellent. Okay. So here we are, we're down in the Villager Trading Hall. Uh, basically copied uh, Data's uh, design exactly. I did the uh, the arched roof. I know he was uh, kind of showing the blocks uh, that he was going to do. I, I decided to use stairs because I thought it looked really cool, giving you that nice arched effect. Uh, threw some glowstone up in the top. Uh, threw a little glowstone on the floor here to light everything up really well. Over down here, we uh, we glassed in this area as they uh, transition from one side to another. And I'll tell you, these villagers are amazingly resilient on this water stream. I've seen these guys actually almost completely over to the side, and they will walk against that water stream and go completely back over here. It's nuts how they do that. Uh, I wouldn't have thought they could uh, uh, maintain that uh, to go backwards, but here they go. They're going around and around and around. I, I actually made a continuous water channel all the way through. Uh, Data, I think, was going to uh, dump his excess into the torture chamber. But uh, I decided, now nah, we'll just go ahead and uh, make a loop and make sure that there's plenty of villagers here. So here we are at the individual chambers. Uh, uh, it works very, very well. As I said, just exactly like his design. I can go in and see what uh, this guy's got. Uh, here he wants uh, an emerald for 11 arrows. Uh, and I've got uh, uh, item uh, signs up here uh, so that I can do it. Occasionally this happens. So once in a while we'll get a couple of, of ones in the same chamber. That's a terrible deal. 12 books. Oh, that's a terrible deal too. So we'll go ahead. We're going to go ahead and kill these guys off. Was actually, oh, there's actually three in there. How in the world do we get three in there? That's strange. So, well, you know what? I don't think any of them. Okay, he's got eight. He's got ten. And that guy, I can't even get to that guy. He's glitched out. So let's just go ahead and boom. He's gone. Uh, 
Uh, we'll go ahead and check these other cells, see if they double up. I'm not sure how they actually get doubled up like that. Uh, they must be bunched together at the time that uh, one of these cells is empty. See, now we've got two in here, too. Okay, you want 16 diamonds for a chest plate. That's a little... Uh, that's not too bad. So let's take the one with the uh, 16 diamonds. Yeah, let's kill him off. Yeah, they even even when they die, they scream like he walks. That's just crazy. Uh, I'm not sure if I really like that or not, but oh well. Okay, so I think we've got all the cells now squared away. It looks like there's one in every cell. And uh, this is an empty one. That should populate shortly. Uh, we've got some chests in here where we can store the emeralds and some of the stuff that we get from these guys. But uh, basically, that just allows you to come up and... Uh, and uh, see what they've got for a trade. Oh, he's got some saddles. That's cool. I don't know where I can get saddles if I need some more for the horses. So that's the Villager Trading Hall. Um, I uh, went ahead and did uh, a couple of maintenance areas in here because I wanted to be able to get up and uh, get at the stuff in the back just in case we need to fix anything up. So uh, here is the, uh, the back side of the guts. And again, as I said, it looks just exactly like a data's Now, see, there's the guys going by, and of course, there's no water there. So they're trying to jump up and down, but of course, uh, the dispenser is off, so they're not able to get up there. So they're getting kind of pushed along. Now, this one, uh, since we got villagers on the way, we'll watch this guy pop in. Uh, data was lucky enough to catch one of his guys on his live stream uh, come up through. But this guy, when... Uh, when they pop through, he should be jumping up and down, and he should come up through that water stream right there, and uh, as soon as he does, he'll come down and lift this trip wire, and that'll turn off that dispenser so that somebody else can come up. Here he comes. Okay, he gets pushed across. He hits that trip wire. There it goes. Oh, that's interesting. As he's bouncing up and down, he's actually triggering that on and off. Ah, that's interesting. Now, that's an interesting little glitch. Hmm. I'm not sure if Data is aware that that happens. But, uh, yeah, look at that. That's interesting. Uh, learn something about maybe how more than one villager ends up getting in here. Because if they bounce up and down the right amount of times, uh, they could actually end up leaving that dispenser turned on. So that that's an interesting little problem. I have to think about that and see if there's a way that uh, once he gets uh, up past uh, uh, that that uh, we can make that so that, that stays off. Alright, Myers Man here. I'm breaking into this uh, section on the villager trading hall uh, because uh, I got thinking about the issue that we saw there with the uh, villager jumping up and down on that block uh, in, in that uh, area where the water block is. And it's like, okay, let's see if we can come up with a way to, to fix that. And uh, and looking at the video a couple of times, I realized, hey, you know, that there's nothing over their heads uh, right in that area. So uh, that uh, pretty much allows them to hop up and down pretty freely. So what we decided to do, and I've uh, go ahead and uh, break this block out so I can get up there. All right, there we go. Uh, basically what we did is we went ahead and we put two blocks uh, all the way along here. Uh, th there's the block where they can drop down. I couldn't put a block here because then they wouldn't be able to get through. But uh, right as soon as they drop in there, I wanted to limit their ability to hop up and down. Now they can still hop up and down right at this, this edge, but uh, it seems they usually get underneath this block pretty quickly. So. Uh, I had initially just put a row right here all the way across and left this block open. But then I noticed that uh, as they got near this edge, they were hopping on this side of the water block and, and tripping it multiple times as well. So basically all I've done is I've run a couple of blocks all the way down across the uh, the top of this uh, this uh, water chamber here where the, where the tripwire is. And that really seems to limit their ability to hop up and down and... Uh, and, and uh, not trip that tripwire multiple times. Uh, I've done this to both sides, and uh, I've cleared out a bunch of chambers and watched these guys come in, and so far I haven't had any doubles or triples or multiple guys in the same room. So this seems to be the fix for this. Uh, um, I will uh, definitely let Data know that uh, you can't leave these, these areas open, uh, even though the sides are high enough for them to uh, prevent 
uh, the villagers from hopping out, it's them hopping up and down in this open space uh, on these individual uh, uh, chambers that seems to allow that tripwire to, to go multiple times and of course then it, uh, it triggers the dispensers on and off and sometimes they get left on which uh, allows another villager to, uh, to come up and go through. So I've done this to both sides on my uh, design and it seems to work pretty good. So uh, just thought I wanted to jump in and uh, let everybody know uh, what I'd done with that. So uh, without any further ado, we'll get back to the video tour. Enjoy. But yeah, it looks like he's bouncing up and down in that water stream, um, and he's tripping that trip wire multiple times and turning that block on and off. I hadn't noticed that. I've watched a couple of these villagers come up through, and I hadn't seen that particular behavior, so that's interesting. Okay. Also, I noticed I probably should get a bl another block right there, because he was getting awfully close to maybe hopping out, and we certainly don't want any villagers running around in this area. Um, this is just a little observation window for uh, the guys, but uh, um, over here where I've got the stone bricks, that's the bottom of the shaft from the uh, villager breeding system. And they come along and they get tra uh, brought over here by a water stream and they come in, oh, there's somebody coming through from uh, uh, circling around. They drop right there and they come right straight down and this is where they enter the system and they will go into the water channel and as I said before they go all the way uh, uh, down to the far end down there and then across that side and then they come back across this way and then I've got a uh, another water channel that comes in behind out in the back and then returns them into the loop right there we just saw one of the guys uh, coming from the back side uh, going around the loop another time now over here I've got a ladder that goes down Data is making a torture chamber. I didn't do anything. We'll leave that to Data's uh, evil genius to come up. But uh, basically, I just uh, uh, put a water channel in here, and I want to make sure that I uh, don't fall down there. That is all the way down to bedrock, and uh, not that the fall wouldn't kill him, but just to make sure we threw some, some extra lava down at the bottom, just above the bedrock area. So they are well aware away from all of the other villagers so we don't get any penalty for a villager dying because I understand that uh, if a villager dies within 16 blocks of a player uh, the player ends up being blamed for it and uh, then uh, they, they won't breed or trade or something along that line so uh, basically this is uh, this is the setup on this side and then we have a ladder that comes up over here that allows me to get into the guts of the machine on the bottom. This is underneath the trading system. There's all the pistons and the redstone torches that uh, bring everything up to the uh, water dispensers. So we've got access to this maintenance area if we need to get in here to, to fix anything. Uh, but uh, as I said, this is basically an exact copy of, uh, of Daedalus's design. We just uh, had a bit more time and went ahead and uh, was able to uh, to get this uh, squared away, so we'll jump over that, and then we can get up the ladder. Well, if I get out of fly mode here, I think I can get up the ladder. All right, let, me, let me come down here. Whoop! All right, there. Am I on the ground now? Okay, there we go. Now I can climb the ladder, and we jump out here, and uh, there we are back in our maintenance area, an observation area for that. We've got the exact same thing over here. This is just the other side of things, but uh, works the same way. There's that canal that leads out back, and the same ladder system over here, so we can get at the underneath. And of course, here is the other side of the uh, the room. Again, another window here, so we can observe the guys floating by. There's one right there. Hello there, Mr. Villager, and he is on his way uh, around for another trip. We're gonna have to go in and. Uh, check out all the trades in here and start uh, dropping out some of the ones that we don't want. Get fresh villagers in there with better trades. But uh, there we are. That is the villager trading system. It uh, The villager trading hall, rather. And uh, I think it came out really, really well. Thank you, Data, for your inspiration with this. And uh, hopefully you all like this as well. And we don't have too much left on the tour. We're going to go ahead and take the portal uh, back. There we go. We're now back in home base. Uh, those portals are, are fantastic. 
Now we've got to wait for everything to render up again. Oh, some creepers outside, I guess. Yeah, okay, so we'll give, every, uh, give everything a second to go ahead and render out. Uh, that's the problem with jumping with portals, that suddenly you're in a, a different chunk and everything is like, ah, i got to render, i got to render. So, yeah, we can see we've got some some render issues down there. Okay, the last thing, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, see if we can get this all to render out. Okay, there we go. Got a couple of dogs. I went out and got a couple of dogs because uh, I didn't have any dogs, so I wanted to have a couple of those in the house. We'll maybe uh, breed those up. But the last thing we're going to show you is the house. Um, this is a work in progress. Uh, by It is nowhere near done. Um, I've uh, been kind of busy doing some other things, but We'll give you the quick tour of this anyway. Um, we'll go ahead and take a, a quick pause here and uh, break the video and then we'll come back and we'll give you the quick tour of that. We'll be right back. Alright, we're back and uh, Myers Band with the second world tour in Showcase. I've uh, decided to change my mind. I'm not going to go ahead and do the house section in this video. It's running fairly long as it is now. So we will go ahead and properly save that for part four. Uh, as I said, the house is kind of a work in progress. It's really not finished anyway. So uh, there really isn't a ton to show. And, uh, and looking over the footage that I shot, there was a lot of... Uh, rendering glitches and problems and it's like you know what uh we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap it up right here we'll get part three published so uh thanks everybody i hope uh, you enjoyed uh part three of the second world tour and showcase and we will do a part four as i said uh we'll, we will give you a quick house tour at uh, uh even in, in whatever state it's in hopefully the uh rendering will work a lot better but uh well, that's it for for part three for now and uh we will uh uh, if there's any other projects or anything uh, new, we will include that in the part four as well. So the, <laughs> this is uh, turning out to run a lot more parts than I originally intended. I figured I'd do uh, you know, one, maybe two. Now we're into three, and it looks like there's going to be a part four. So, all right, uh, that's uh, all well and good. Uh, give me uh, something to, to do later on and uh, something for you to watch later. So, again, thank you all for watching this and uh, uh, again a uh, great kudos out for monkey farm and doc m and uh, daedalus and all the people that uh, i basically uh, uh, got inspiration from and uh, copied their designs thank you guys so much you're all fantastic and uh, again thanks to all the people that have made comments and all the kind words uh, for uh, those that have watched this video. So this is Mars Man. We'll go ahead and wrap this up. This is uh, the end of part three of the second World Tour and Showcase. We'll catch her again for part four. Bye-bye for now.